Hello folks. Now, somebody sent me an interesting document. Um, it's actually uh, an MIT Management Sloan School report by Sarah Brown and it was on the 14th of April of this year, 2020. The headline, how to restart the economy with a post-pandemic workforce. Okay, so you can see there just off the headline that the restart of the economy is going to be all about creating a workforce that's going to satisfy the post-pandemic event. Now let's bear in mind people that this is an exercise and it's not uh, planned to end until the 31st of January 2025. So it's an exercise. And the more you comply, the worse this is going to get. Uh, we've, you know, I've mentioned this many times. And I know the guys that tend to watch these videos as a general rule. I'm not talking about you guys, but we're always getting new people. And we have to sort of include everybody. So, you know, I'm not talking to you specifically when I'm saying the mask, etc. Because in most cases, I know you guys are not, not doing that. So don't be thinking that that's aimed at you specifically. So it says, why it matters. Getting people back to work quickly and safely is vital for the economy. An MIT researcher outlines how testing and technology can help identify a safe workforce. Can you see that? A safe workforce. It's the writings on the wall, people, if we keep going with this. It's, it's, this is not good. It says, while a drastic shutdown of business has been the key part of tackling the COVID-19 pandemic, the economic fallout is spiralling, with almost 10 million people filing for unemployment in the last two weeks of March, and markets dropping precipitously. A key question is how to restart the economy safely and efficiently when the time comes. So they're admitting there that they've uh, stopped the economy, basically. Uh, so basically, on this garbage science that we're all expected to eat, <clears throat> the real aim is about killing the economies because they want to restart it with all the new rules that they can muster, which is basically going to cancel out free enterprise in accordance with Agenda 21, now Agenda 2130. That process could hinge on digital tools and a workforce of people who are certified as immune to COVID-19 according to MIT professor Ellen Allen Pentland, the faculty director of MIT Connection Science and co-creator of the MIT Media Lab. Now, I've done a video and we've also done a few reports on the MIT Media Lab. This operation was brought into being by Epstein money. Okay, the science that they use has also been brought into MIT with Epstein money. Okay, there was big hoo-ha. I'll put that video at the bottom of this video for you to check out if you haven't already seen it. Um, Pentland has drafted a white paper called Restarting the Economy and Avoiding Big Brother that outlines how antibody testing could determine which workers are immune, how those workers could be certified and what questions will have to be answered for this to happen. So this is April, remember, of this year. He's working with the United Nations and the Club of de Madrid, which is a consortium of former democratic presidents and prime ministers on this issue. So basically, all the asswipes that have operated against all peoples that they're in, specifically presidents and prime ministers, have been consulted <laughs> and giving input into this uh, MIT agenda. Restarting the economy is especially important to prevent a prolonged recession that would take a severe toll on poor and vulnerable people, Pentland, the head of big data and information privacy at the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy, said, repeated waves of infection, widespread unemployment and closed or decimated business could further hamper recovery. Recovery, well... <laughs> 
they're the creators of this nonsense, so they don't really give him monkeys about recovery unless it's going to be in relation to this new safe workforce on the restart post-pandemic. We are going to have to restart the economy, starting from a depression level situation. So there you go, they're moving it to depression level, they have to take it to that, that's their intention. Get it to a depression level situation and then they can restart the economy. That's exactly what he's just said there. Pentland wrote in the paper, but how? Here are three concrete steps government can take to get back to business. So they're telling government what to do. This is MIT. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein, money. Jeffrey Epstein, science. Jeffrey Epstein, blackmail. To ensure all concerned follow this lead, this COVID, this lockdown, this everything that's been going on this year has been procured in a big way by the network behind Jeffrey Epstein. And of course now we can sort of see what this blackmail was really all about, you know, with all these stars, celebrities, politicals and other important people that have specific positions um, that would be required to be under the wing of this, to push forward this entire nonsense we've suffered so far this year and leading to this depression, destruction of economy and a restart. We've already done a video on the digital dollar, the app for the test and trace. It's all interconnected into this creating the safe workforce. <clears throat> a safe work force could be the key to restarting the economy, Penler said. If those who recover from COVID-19 develop immunity, they could rejoin the workforce. So straight to where then, you're, you're immediately being contracted into the test and trace because it's going to be an essential part if you want to work. And of course, to do this, the only work available is going to be through corporations and businesses that have joined this system through taking the 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, so you can see how it's all interconnected and operating to bring this to fruition. Um, a safe workforce could also include people who have been inoculated once a vaccine becomes readily available. Could, they use the term, so they didn't want to frighten you there back in April, because of course the vaccine was set for the fourth quarter, which we're in now. The way behind the t test and trace hasn't even got it got going, and this pretense that everybody's rushing to it and supporting it is a a lie, and b the uh, results they're getting for this public are behind it. If you actually look at the questions, they're so NLP based; it's quite ridiculous. There is a guy who's actually going through that on a short video, which again I will put up at the bottom of this video. The Federal Drug Administration has approved a new test for COVID-19 antibodies, but scientists are still researching whether having antibodies means a person is immune. How powerful their immune response is and how long it will last. So that's going back to, excuse me, before they introduced this nonsense test. <clears throat> Germany has started antibody testing and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has said antibody testing will be a key part of restarting the economy there. A safe workforce could be cleared to go back to work in front of house customer facing jobs. Pentland said he anticipates an immune workforce would be young and likely to come from lower income communities that are disproportionately affected by the virus. Now that again is interesting. So they, they're going to start to offer up now people that are at the lower scale of the thing because they're more likely to take the vaccine because they're not the brightest uh, lights on the tree. So that's going to sideline anybody that's not classed as young. Can you see this new workforce? This is why they've put so much effort into programming the children, these generations since 97. It's about them. These are the children, the people they don't want to be upsetting with any other reality. And why they're censoring the internet. It's the, these, this generation that don't want to get this information. You don't really care about you out there because you, you're not going to be given any jobs. You're only going to get universal credit if you take the vaccine. So it is imperative that we stop this now. Because every day that passes, this gains more power. And we are pushed further and further into abstract poverty. Um, the only way out, of course, is to dance to this nonsense.
These workers are more likely to have lost their jobs, Pentland said. Widespread testing for COVID-19 and antibodies will also provide valuable information. Of course, it'll fill the data banks with all your genetic and medical data. You know, these things are private. You've got to remember, this is not the state anymore. It's not like you're giving up your data, your medical stuff, to the state that's going to hold it private. This is the private corporations encouraging you to hand over all your data or giving them permission to use it by definition of the fact you're going to enter into contract with all this nonsense to testing, you know, etc. There's your contracts. They're turning into a patient of this system as opposed to you still believing you're a patient of the NHS here in England, Scotland and Wales and that you are just put but it's probably different in America they've had private health care all along so it's you know you can see it's going to be easier to get it stuck in that one I would suggest because the platform is already built the NHS is now privatised but uh, there's still a way to go before they can activate their authority by claiming the consent you've given to taking these tests etc I mean, you're already on health plans with the NHS now anyway, so they already know a big deal about your health. They've got all your data, your genetics, etc., your blood type, everything. They've got, they've got it all if you are a patient of the NHS. Uh, <clears throat> this sort of data makes early detection of infection and contract tracing much easier, eventually presenting successive ways of infection. Pentland said during a recent MIT Sloan Web briefing, which is in re unbelievable, you know, a virus can't be caught. It cannot be caught. The only way a virus can be inserted into the body is through a vaccination. And, of course, viruses are not alive. We've got to remember that. They're a, they're a solvent, if, if anything, that your body releases to combat certain bacterial infections. This, of course, is a synthetic substance. And, of course, there's a lot of information around now that suggests that this is a, there's a genome addition to this vaccine they want to get rolled out um, from which because the genome is patented then they can claim ownership of your biological system or your body now that's important that you understand as well that if this genome is patented as it would be suggested that once you insert it into your bio biological system as Monsanto did with the uh, GM crops by throwing the seeds on all farmers and then making them pay a, a fee for growing their patented seed. The same is going to go with this, that they own your body now because you've got now their patented product inside your body. Um, that's when this system gets serious and they can force the entire microchipping, except all the nonsense that they're planning to do, the polymers they've been putting in you, uh, and then the nanotech, uh, which is also being suggested as, as either part of this first wave or potentially, certainly uh, in in the next wave of vaccines that are going to come out. Because once if if you got the vaccine, everybody, let's say everybody got the vaccine, they'd soon be crying and say, "Oh no, sorry, it's not working. We need another one." It would be never ending. The best thing to do is don't give them that power by not having the vaccine. Don't get the test and trace, so you're not entering into the contract. Uh, you know, they can't fine you if you've not entered into the contract. They can't make you wear the mask if you haven't entered into the contract. You're actually choosing to do those things, remember. Safely restarting the economy requires a way to verify people are immune or vaccinated. That's right. Pendleton said, similar to tuberculosis test certifications required for food workers or required vaccination documentation for childcare workers. So you can see all these documentation that they're going to insist on is all about vaccinations. You know, med medical intrusions into your system and if they can get the younger generations to go for this without understanding what's actually going on that entire generation will then be owned by this private system yeah a bit like uh hitler turned a generation into brown shirts through the methods of uh programming in the schools the school system that's how they achieved a full generation of brown shirts who were then rife for worship now you can see that they're using the same format today. We've found that with Froebel, they're using it. We've done a video where we interviewed uh, Adam Atchison, who's an expert on NLP, and he gave us a great insight into how that is actually used against you. But that was only part one. We're going to do uh, 
quite a few of those interviews, I would think, just to get a fuller grasp of how they're actually operating this system. So it's aimed at the youngsters. If they can get this system in, get this patented genome in, then that generation is owned by consent, is contracted, and basically will have to do exactly as they're told, as did the brown shirts, who were ultimately completely annihilated in the war. That was the aim of it, you see. And that goes back to the killing the creditors, as we've discussed in previous videos. Where are we? Uh, charcoal workers, that's right. That would allow companies, governments and hospitals to hire workers who were safer, both for customers but also for themselves, Pentland said. These people could staff consumer-facing services. More at-risk people could perform safer backroom functions with less human contact, he said. So they really don't, they're really pushing to, for, to stop this human to human contact. You know, Hitler did this, they did this, they shut all the bars, they banned smoking, all the same things that we've already witnessed in order to stop the grapevine. Because pubs, everybody met, that's where everybody were discussing other things, and nothing were escaping anything. We were spoken in Scotland in the morning, Land's End Cornwall knew all about it by the afternoon. That's the rumour mill. Social media has captured the rumour mill now, so it has full insight into the rumour mill. That's what the social media has all been about. Um, and it's fed the deep state, giving them the data, so they've been able to manipulate Trump into office using the key words that all the Americans were using on social media for the few years before they got to that election time. So Trump was brought in on the key words that all the Americans were using way before Trump were even thought of. Make America great again. All those key buzzwords were not Trump's. They were given to Trump by a Cambridge Analytica, the man that pulled him out from a lagging campaign um, and gave him these preset protocol mantras that already resonated immediately with all the Americans because it was there that we're discussing those very terms. So you can see how, how important the uh, collection of data through social media has been. Also the census, um, that's another one. And 37 million Englishmen and women identify themselves as white English, not white British. That is a good sign because it shows that the idea of English and England is strong. And once we do recognise the British Empire isn't England, it never has been. It's never been an English Empire, it's always been a British Empire, which doesn't belong to anything England. There's a lot of power of ownership in Scotland, but that's because a huge influx uh, from European bloodlines entered Scotland in under King David the um, First. But even so, you don't blame a nation. You, you've got to remember these systems that have took hold in and took root in nations. Uh, the, the populations you, you basically just run around blind. And, and that's the same in all nations. China, America, Canada. All the, what we've got to understand is we're, we're talking about the empire, the imperial section of everything. So it's taken the governments, now the corporations, the, the secret societies have, have, have formed them, protected them, expanded them. You know, that, that is the empire. It's not the body of pu public, basically. It's these organisations who are knowingly operating contrary to the nations that it's, it's uh, enforcing its will. Pentland said there are several options for protecting privacy, including critical digital identities, sorry, creating digital identities. You see, there again, this is moving off title. This is moving, so you're man, you've title then your birth certificate title and this is a completely new one this is in the the realm of the internet it's, it's in a completely fake so it's, uh, it's just um... so including creating a digital identity containing personal information that is relevant to what a person can or can't do banks credit unions or other civic institutions could serve as repositories for health information he said similar to the way these institutions already hold information about people's financial status and identity. So what they're basically telling you there is they're accepting that this body of information is going to be separate from the existing institutions because it's in private hands. But they're going to use our places that our institutions were found in. So basically that's an admission that they've taken it over. Something else has become in our place of what was. You know, when you when you understand a language like that, that's exactly what they're telling you. That's they're speaking to their own ear. They're speaking to those that understand it at this level. Hopefully, I'm helping you 
to see through the just face value of this document, this this report, so you can see the, the, the actual communication that it's giving to those who are at the same level of understanding how, how they speak and what they actually mean. A citizen can verify their health status to a, a participating merchant or employer in the same way their credit card or identity card is certified. So there you go, merchants, so that's anywhere you buy products from, or employer, stakeholder committee. They're the employers now, corporate. You know, the aim is now to destroy private enterprise, so that's your addresses, your barbers, your local shop, yeah? Anything that's not part of this corporate system, um, it, it, the intention is that you don't come back. You're not coming back. And, and those that do have to implement these systems, track and trace app, digital dollar app, and this uh, immunity nonsense now, this which is part of the test and trace, etc. And the vaccine, of course, is the big one. Um, he noted that people can verify their health status with their smartphone, similar to how people make mobile payments. And mobile phones can also check the status of others in the air who's using anonymous data. How can it be anonymous if it's data? Somebody's holding that data. Is that company signed in to the Data Protections Act with the Information Commissioner's Office? Because that's important. If they're not, they cannot deal with data. Acro, the company, as I mentioned in the last video, is the organisation fining you under this nonsense system. They aren't signed in with the Information Commissioner's Office on data protection. They are not allowed to hold your data or receive your data from any other body. Certainly not use it to send you letters demanding monies, okay? Extorting money from the population, classes inhabitants under occupation, and that is a, a clear method of gaining more money from the inhabitants because they can't do it any further through taxation because it's at the maximum the economy can bear. Those are the rules of occupation. Not under the United Nations rules of occupation, but under the Chiefs of Staff, uh, English Army, military forces, that is their rules of occupation accepted. So they're moving out of that now with this United Nations, and this is why they're being co-opted. But that's also because they see themselves as the British Army, which is the, the imperial side of things, and not the army it belongs to, which is Scotland and England. Yeah. Now I don't term to use Wales often, not because I'm being awful, but if you've ever spent time on Brecon Beacons with some of those Welsh people, you understand that they do hold a hatred for the English for no reason other than it's been passed on through the generations. That needs to be addressed by a lot of people down there in Wales, and it does. But Wales is part of England, so it's only charade. You know, really, because whatever England says, Wales has to do. OK, we see now that Wales seem to be doing a different angle with this COVID. Uh, they're sort of banning the, the sale of anything other than food. So they're closing off aisles in supermarkets where it's goods they deem deeming not necessary. Now, how that helps in the fight for any kind of pandemic, I would never be persuaded it would. So it's a clear nonsense. It's just a power grab. They're just shoving it down your neck a that little bit more, making things more difficult for you. So that at some point they can force you into this shit. Some countries are already exploring certificates or immunity passports that would allow people to test positive for antibodies to leave lockdown. To leave lockdown. Though there are still concerns about testing efficiency. So again, this is back in April, remember. We've, we've passed that now. We've seen what this is actually, how it pans out in real time. China is issuing citizen QR codes on mobile phones that dictates whether they should remain in quarantine or they can leave their homes, though the system has raised concerns about government monitoring. As always, protecting user privacy is a concern. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. With sharing this sort of information, Pentland said. Toward that end, Pentland is part of an MIT research team working on an app called Private Kit Safe Paths 
which uses Bluetooth to let people trace their locations and see if they had any potential to exposure. It also helps people who test positive for the virus trace who they might have been in contact with. The app is free, open source and privacy first. You should check if these companies are signed into the Data Protections Act because if they're not, they cannot hold data, pass on your data or receive your data legally. You're doing it, but it's illegal. People don't know this, so nobody's operating against it. So answer lingering questions is the final part of this report. Pentland said there are several questions to consider around unexplored consequences. For example, while shunning or discrimination take Will shunning or discrimination take place towards those who test positive? Well, that's their intention. Creating a safe work workforce would also likely require moving workers to different positions for which they might not be skilled. So this is total. They've got rid of the contracts when you all signed on to the first original furlough. What you did, you sacked yourself from any contracts you were under without realising it because most people I spoke to didn't even read it. There was only one person I know that read it. And that's because I met her. Okay? You sat yourself you, out of your contract. You got furloughed, so you came in on a, no, a new contract that basically gives them the ability to do this and force this nonsense. So they could put you into a position you're not, you're not skilled at. To help the transition take place quickly and smoothly, government or businesses might need to provide incentives to workers, including pay rises for moving into new or customer facing roles. Well, we haven't seen any signs of that, have we? So that's been took off the books for a start. Because what are we now? Coming towards the end of October. This is April. Well, I haven't heard anybody, let's say that, that's involved in getting it, that's been offered pay rises. Ush money, yeah. Signing official secrets that yeah. But not to be offered pay rises. To help kickstart use of this process, government or large employers can provide financial incentives to visit newly open merchants to employ safe workers in customer facing positions. So they're going to. Ah, now can you see a lot of new merchants opening everywhere, new shops appearing? This, in a lot of cases, is the kefir system again. So you can see how massive this kefir system is in this system. It's huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, now you've got kefir on every stakeholder committee in every town and city in this country with the recent takeover of the ASDA by the Rothschild Front and the brothers that uh, front the Euro Garage uh, Empire. In the long run, certifying immunity might be the first step towards other certifications for pro-social or healthy behaviours, Pentland said which would reduce costs in hospitals and lead to better health outcomes throughout the economy. So it's all about health, economy, pandemic, vaccine, certification, digital dollar, safe workforce. So we really are now getting to the point where you guys out there with businesses, you've took the money because they wrecked your business. You owe them nothing. Get out of them contracts, start afresh, and carry on as you were. We don't need these people interfering in our world when we can see now the intent and end game of it is to completely annihilate any private enterprise. That is a key protocol of Agenda 21 and sustainable development operated by the United Nations. So... We're going to expand this study as we've started with these recent videos, the digital dollar, etc., the trace, test and trace video, because this is actually where it's at. And MIT needs to be fingered here as a leading player in this entire, especially through the media lab, through the entire garbage science that's being used to push governments into operating contrary to law and moving everybody into this new system, the reset. So <clears throat> I'll put a, a picture of the heading and I'll put a link to this report under this video. And I hope that you start to help to grasp that this is important and maybe we need to start doing leaflets just on people's windscreens under the thing. That's all you have to do. Tiny little leaflets under the windscreen wiper and off you go. They can read it or they don't have to read it. And, and, and start to just give them leads to this kind of information before 
they gain more and more people into this system by deception. And with that, I will say until the next time.